Hi, I'm Chris with Fast Track. In this video, we're going to walk you through studying your snowmobile. Get ready. This is not a glorified sales video that glosses over the install. We're getting into the nitty gritty, showing you all the secrets we've learned over the years and turning you into an expert. things need to be in order before we start the install. First, we need to verify there is enough clearance for the tunnel for the studs. If you have a trail or a crossover snowmobile with a stock track, it's rarely an issue, but double check in the owner's manual for a stud recommendation to verify you're running within manufacturer's specification. If you have a snowmobile with a larger than stock track or utility sled, you need to physically make sure there's enough room for those studs. In order to use studs in your track, tunnel protection must be added. These are plastic or aluminum strips that run across the tunnel. They prevent the studs from hitting the tunnel if your suspension bottoms out. Most snowmobiles do not come with tunnel protection and it's something you will have to install. We do not sell tunnel protection, but recommend using the OEM tunnel protectors for your specific model. If you have any questions or trouble finding the part number for the specific kit you need, please contact us via email or phone. Let's go over the tools you'll need to install your stud kit. First is a drill and a track cutting tool to place the holes in the track. Next, you'll need a long flathead screwdriver to push the studs into the track. After that, a half inch deep well socket for the nuts, ratchet if you choose to hand tighten, T25 wrench or bit to hold the base of the stud, and our preferred tightening method, and then pack to torque the nuts down. One of the most difficult parts of the studying process is the pattern. The goal is balance with the most amount of scratch lines. The scratch line is the physical location of the stud. The more lines that do not repeat, the better. An off-the-shelf template saves a lot of time but leaves a lot of scratch lines on the table. But creating your own pattern to maximize scratch lines can be quite tedious. Here at Fast Track, our track spec templates are designed for maximum scratch lines in the safest part of the track. If you're able to print these at home, they are specific to your track and quantity. Access to the library is included with our stud kits. To use our track spec template, you'll need to select the correct one from our library. Today we are studying a snowmobile with a 144 inch track, doing three studs per row and using an SP double and our XL single backer. If you forgot your track length, enter your snowmobile in the application finder at the bottom and line it up with the quantity you purchased. Click the correct template to open up the file. Take a quick glance, make sure everything is correct. Now when you print the template, it is critical to make sure the scale is set to 100%. Any other option can result in incorrect spacing. Once printed, we need to make sure this line measures seven and three quarter inches. If this line is off, the spacing is going to be off on the template. Now we verify that the scaling is correct on the template. We need to verify the spacing for the holes is correct for, with the backers. This is one of the most critical aspects, especially if you're running double backers or a three per row pattern. Once the spacing is verified, let's cut it out. We're going to cut every line with the scissor icon. Once we've cut it out, just take a standard hole punch and punch out the gray areas. Sometimes if the hole punch isn't big enough to reach the hole, you just want to cut a slit directly in front of the hole, pull it open, 
That will be easy to reach. Now it's time to lay out the template and mark the track. Uh, two good things to have is you want a metallic marker or a paint marker. This will be able to nicely mark the track. And when you get into areas that have flash like this, you really don't want to drill into that because it'll make the drill walk. So you just simply just clip the areas of the flash. Now we got a nice smooth surface to drill on. The template starts at one and moves towards the front of the snowmobile. This particular snowmobile has 57 lugs. This pattern goes over 14 windows. It's gonna repeat a total of four times and then we will have an odd window that we will just pick a line in the middle of the pattern. Now a key factor is you wanna have these lined up, these black lines in the center. Now we could mark the track, hold the paper and just simply color the line. One good idea to do is on the first and the last is just put number of the pattern so you don't get lost. I also recommend taking the belt off the clutch to make it easier to rotate the track. One thing I like to do before we start drilling is put the backers on the track to verify the spacing's correct and patterns comes out to how we want it. We're gonna go from 14 to one, that way we can rotate it with the backers all on the track and they won't drop off. So there it is. That is our pattern laid out. Once we finish marking the track, we're going to want to check the farthest row to make sure it's not going to come in contact with this tunnel protector. Some other sleds might have a tunnel protector up the center you want to check. And we are clear. Now that the stud locations are marked and verified, it's time to start drilling. For putting holes in the track, you need a track cutting tool. This is a non-negotiable. Using a standard drill bit can damage the track by pulling out the rows of fiberglass cords that run from side to side. The track cutting tool puts the hole in the track using friction. A high RPM drill is highly recommended. It will make your life much easier. Now before we get too eager turning this track into Swiss cheese, we need to make sure the location we're drilling at has nothing beneath it, such as your idler wheels or suspension parts. We're going to want to keep it in this area right here as this has the most clearance. Once you punch through the track, you're going to have about three inches of that tool sticking out. On this particular pattern, I'm running a double backer, so I'm only going to drill the outside holes. Later on, I'm going to make a jig out of an existing double backer and drill the center hole. If you're running only single backers, ignore the step, and you can drill every single hole. Now let's get to it. This is where the fun begins. Now you want to watch to make sure that the tips don't, you don't have any rubber sticking out of the tips. Because when you have the tip just sticking on there, it can cause you to walk like we just experienced there. So we have a little tiny screwdriver in this instance. Always go from the eject port right here and just pull them on out. You always want metal on rubber contact. Now that we are finished drilling, it's time to push the studs through the track. Our cutting tool is a bit undersized to create a snug fit. Because of this, it requires a bit of force to push the studs through the track. We aren't going to use our thumbs, we're going to use this large flathead screwdriver as leverage to push the studs in, making it real easy for you. 
push the stud in, simply insert the tip, take the screwdriver, stick it underneath the suspension rail, take the flat head and put it on the head of the stud and simply pull up. We're going to go throughout the whole track doing this one operation and once we're finished we're going to reconvene and we'll go through some tightening up the backers. In this section, we're going to cover drilling the second hole for the double backer. If we're only using single backers, just skip ahead to the tightening section. For those of you with the double backer, the second hole spacing is critical. There's very little tolerance for error. Too close or too far, you end up with a crooked stud. That's why we recommend creating a jig. Something that makes sure you put on the first stud, spacing on the second hole, correct. We recommend using a spare double backer. We drill out one side to a 3 8 bit. That way the track cutting tool will fit right through it. And it makes it easy to use. All you need to do, place the undrilled side on the protruding stud, drill a bit through the hole, and you get perfect spacing every time. We are almost there. If your kit uses a lock nut, the best practice is to take the backers, place them on the stud, take the lock nuts, thread them on, and go through the whole track. Since this is a 1.5 inch lug and requires our 1.625 stud, we need to run our Top Gun tall nut. This is not a lock nut and requires a red thread locker. This changes the process a bit. After we apply the thread locker, we'll only thread one row at a time and then go back and torque. When it comes to torquing the stud, our stud does not have a shoulder for the backer to bottom out on like other kids that have a torque spec. We do this for a couple of reasons. One, the shoulder adds weight and is only useful on installation. And two, the torque spec doesn't take into consideration the track hardness. 15 foot pounds on a warm track versus a cold track yield two totally different results. That is why we recommend tightening the stud so the head is flush into the track. This generally takes between 10 and 15 foot pounds of torque to get it flush. It can be lower depending on the install environment. The nut will seat into the backer a little bit, but you do not want to smush the backer. We're going to tighten our kit with a cordless impact. These impacts are incredibly powerful and have more than enough power to wreck things. You want to take your time on it, get the feel, and just go slow. All right, folks, this is the beginning of the end. This is when your pattern takes shape and you get to see what your track looks like with your backers and studs. I like to put the backers on. Then we're going to apply Loctite to the nuts and go one row at a time. I like to apply it to the bottom of the nut. And thread it lightly. Now it's time to start. Look under the track and have a visual of the head of the stud. That way you kind of get your get your feel. what it takes to bring these flush into the track. Just 
remember, nice and slow on the impact. Once all the studs have been tightened, go back through the whole track and make sure none have been missed. I like to mark the track just so you know when you complete a full cycle. Simply rotate and look for any loose or untightened studs. You also want to look over here and make sure the heads are sitting flush into the track in case you didn't torque anything down enough. After you've verified all the studs have been tightened, it's time to get the snowmobile operational again. First step is to place the belt back on the clutch. After we do that, it's time to address the track tension. Once you add studs to the track, chances are it's going to need to be tightened. Every snowmobile is different, so we recommend going into your owner's manual and seeing what they recommend on how to tighten it and what specifications that you want it tightened to. The studs you're going to run it, want to run it a little on the tighter side. With studs installed, you're going to want to upgrade your carbide runner. If you're running two studs per window, you're going to want to run at least six inches of carbide on your runner. If you're running three or more, you're going to want at least eight inches of carbide on that runner. That's it. If you have any questions on installing your Top Gun stud kit, please give us a call or email. I'm Chris with Fast Track. Thank you for watching and let it snow.